you're listening to no barrier no 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 you're not no 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 barriers no 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 stop it barriers stop it barriers radio no my heart's not in it This is where you knuckle down to an hour of film entertainment. Knuckle down. Knuckle down. down. It'll hunker do. Down. That's <laughs> what it is. And you're going to hunker down to an hour of film entertainment. Knuckle down, hunker oh. down, fist it yeah, down. Fisting, it fisting. It. <laughs> yeah, knuckle down. Yeah. Knuckle <laughs> down. Anyway. That was, Let's that not was have it. any fisting down in yes. here. <laughs> we are back. Hello. And welcome to the film file. I'm Lee Ford. I'm Andy Beacon. And we have got a show for you because, well, that's what we do. We put a show on. <laughs> <laughs> Steady on there. Yeah. <coughs> and Andy's got. A... <coughs> oh, Christ. <coughs> well, you get that. You get that. I, I'm off now. <coughs> Let's get this out of the way. <coughs> so, Andy's got a bit of a cough today. <laughs> In case you couldn't tell. <laughs> Whether Andy's going to make it to the end of the show, I don't know. He just had that heightened sense of <laughs> expectation. So, as you know, every show we do a deep dive. And instead of doing a deep dive into one particular film, we're going to be doing a deep dive into the work of Ivan Reitman, who sadly passed away just as we'd finished recording last week's show. So, in honour of Ivan Reitman, let's talk about the great man's work. As I said, Ivan Reitman passed away last week at the age of 75, and he left behind him. He has left behind him a remarkable career, especially in the genre of cinematic comedies. He was born in 1946 in Czechoslovakia. He was born in 1946 in Czechoslovakia and was the son of an Auschwitz survivor and a member of the Czech resistance. He moved to the States in 1954. He moved to the States in 1954 to escape the post-war communism. Oh, I can't speak today, I'm sorry. He moved to the States in 1954 to escape the post-war communist regime and was raised in Toronto, Canada. He attended Hamilton McMaster's... McMaster? He attended Hamilton McMaster University where he started making short films. It was where he met a bevy of talented upcoming performers such as Eugene Levy, Rick Moranis and Martin Short. Upon returning to Toronto, he was hired by one Dan Aykroyd to work on a comedy show Reitman was producing for a local TV station, and the two became fast friends and lifelong collaborators. Just let the cat go out of the room. Reitman's first film as a director and producer was 1971's Foxy Lady, but he's better known for the horror spoof Cannibal Girls which shows up on the marquee in both Ghostbusters 2 and Ghostbusters Afterlife. It starred Levy, Andrea Martin, and several other Reitmans. And several other Reitmans? I'm oh, sorry, it's, I'm reading without my glasses. And several other Reitmans had... And several other Reitmans regulars. In 1978, he moved into producing and produced a film that turned into a classic and turned into a subgenre all its own. And that was National Lanham. That was National Lampoon's Animal House. Directed the by originator John... of the frat boy comedies. Yep, yeah, directed by John Landis, but he has formed the partnership of Reitman with the writer, the great late Harold Ramis. So yeah, what the team up with Ramis led to probably what is the, the pinnacle of Reitman's legacy. As he went into screwball comedies, uh such as Meatballs. Then you had The Magnificent Stripes. Now, Stripes is a film that <laughs> tends to get overlooked oh, I love it. I love by it a lot much. of people. And it came out a year after Private Benjamin, which had kind of done the similar kind of approach. But Stripes is the one that laid down a load of the tropes of the losers out of their element comedies that would follow. And anyone who's a fan of the Police Academy series, if you've not watched Stripes, which is the template which Police Academy decided to rip on, you're missing out immensely. Bill Murray is fantastic, as you would expect. But everyone just comes together so perfectly in Stripes. And even though Ghostbusters was the one that introduced me to Reitman, and that came after Stripes, the success of Stripes obviously led to, 
you know, the gang getting together and uh, coming up with that Ghostbusters thing. But Stripes was a joy to track down once um, during the VHS age. Once I was aware of Bill Murray, Harold Ramis and Ivan Reitman, it was like, but there's this film that came out earlier. What's this like? Boom. Loved it. Yes, the template that he'd done had been done decades earlier with Carry On Sergeant, but come on. Stripes is the defining one. It showcased at the start of the 80s what Reitman, Murray and Ramis could do. And then we got to in 1984. It was everywhere. It's still everywhere. Ghostbusters. The impact of Ghostbusters when it came out was huge. As in 1984, I would have been 11 when this film came out. And you couldn't avoid the logo, which seems so cool. The theme tune that was so cool. Any magazines that had shots of them firing their blasters look so cool. Shots of Slimer all look so cool. A giant marshmallow man. Wow, I need to see this film. And everyone flocked to see it. Toys, games, magazines, Ghostbusters was everywhere. It captured the imaginations of everyone, young and old. And Reitman, his, his whole stamp is on it in the style that it does. But it showcased what he could do when collaborating with people of an equally zany mind. That's right. He retained with his uh, lifelong friend, Dan Aykroyd, who um, basically put the script together to star him and his Blues Brothers brother, John Belushi, who, who sadly died before it saw any development. And Reitman, Reitman did something fantastic with this film. He took big scale special effects. He took comedians such as Murray and Ramis and Aykroyd and even Ernie Hudson. And he made one of the most influential comedies of all time, really. Mm. Uh, a film that, that really does fit the candidate of, of classic. The, the team returned for a sequel in 1989's Ghostbusters 2, which has its fans, I know, but it didn't have the same impact and it didn't have the same heart. After that, uh, after that, uh, Reitman went on to direct and produce the likes of Dave, which is fantastic, Beethoven, Twins, the much under, the much un under, well, to know, <laughs> the much underappreciated heavy metal animated film. Evolution, which he directed, which was kind of a throwback to Ghostbusters to a degree. Kindergarten Cop, Junior, produced Old School, Up in the Air, Draft Day, and most recently produced Ghostbusters Afterlife, which sees his filmmaking son, Jason, continuing the story. It's uh, it, Chatting with people at work, it's surprised how many people didn't realise that Ivan Reitman was responsible for three of Arnold Schwarzenegger's lighter comedies in the late 80s early 90s uh, you've already mentioned kindergarten cop there's junior which wasn't very well received but there's also twins which yeah, everyone kind of forgets and i mean that i mean that was a film that the critics didn't like the critics didn't like most of his product after ghostbusters they you know you'd look if he'd scrape 50 percent worth of critics liking his stuff but one critic who always seemed to love reitman's work was um, the the beloved and respected uh, Roger Ebert, who always gave thumbs up, and he gave a thumbs up on Kindergarten Cop while all the critics were going, eh, it's a bit muddled, and that film was a success. He gave his thumbs up on Twins when all the other critics were going, ah, it, it, Danny DeVito's good, but Arnie's not great in this role, and it was a huge success. So people were clearly listening to significant critics back then, and you know what? I kind of agree with him. I mean, the Kindergarten Cop and Twins aren't great films, but they're likable and charming. And they're made that way because of how well Reitman could handle those kind of scripts. I mean, Kindergarten Cop is two films mashed into one, but it works. It strangely works. Um, Evolution, which I've mentioned, I I love Evolution. Right. It was it was Ghostbusters with aliens. Yeah. And, and I I love the whole, uh, you know, the casting, David Duchovny is, you know, fresh from his X-Files years, is playing, he's basically playing the um, the Bill Murray character. Then you've got Orlando Jones, who is hilarious throughout. Um, I'll never ask for ice cream the same way ever again. And Sean William Scott, who was riding a 
you know, riding his success from the American Pie films at that point in time and starting to branch out. And he just fits well in the team. Then you throw in Julianne Moore, who's always a delight to watch on screen. And I just lapped this up. I rewatched this last year and I still love it. I can still chuckle along with it. And yes, the whole film is basically a 101 minute advert for head and shoulders shampoo. <laughs> but you know what? If you're gonna do, if you're gonna do product placement in such a such a cynical way, why not? <laughs> I think the thing we've got to say about Reitman's career is that he created subgenres of films. He created the big special effects uh, blockbuster comedy, which had never really been done on such a scale before. He created um, the big stars of the time from Saturday Night Live. Um, the vehicle starring Bill Murray and Harold Ramis. Mm. He created the subgenre of the uh, of the college comedy uh, and did it better yeah. than anyone else with uh, National Lampoon's Animal House. Um, he was an innovator, um, but he was a populist at the same time, made popular films, and when they hit, they hit just right. Uh, it's been a, a, a glorious career, and his son, Jason, has now gone on to do... Um, Followed down the, the the family route, I guess, with, with Ghostbusters and Afterlife, but went out and carved a career very much his own with, with his own sort of signature of the films mm. that he makes. But what a career. Uh, and you know what? There's probably one Ivan Reitman film in everybody's film top 10. It, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's nice that he got to see his Ghostbusters legacy restored to the big screen by his son last yeah. year and warmly embraced by the community out there because yeah this is a decades old legacy of films that had such such impact on people people of our generation and to see it revisited on the screen and brought to new life and bringing in new audiences i'm i'm pleased that ivan got to see that come to fruition before he passed away there was work still ha happening on um, his sequel to Twins called Triplets. Now, this has been in the pipeline since 2012, yeah. and it's now where uh, uh, Tracy Morgan was last, like last year that we reported that Tracy Morgan was signing up to play the triplet. He was going to play the other brother that gets introduced to it. Where this film will go now, who will pick it up from this point, whether it will actually still go ahead remains to be seen. But the legacy that Reitman leaves behind will never be forgotten. These are some beloved films and some cult classics that everyone should check out. Do not be surprised if at some point we revisit some of these films in their own deep dive. Absolutely. And that's our tribute to the late great producer-director, Ivan Reitman. <laughs> <laughs>